All right, hey, I'm Charlie Craven, and I'm gonna show you a little trick for uh, rigging hoppers that'll give you a little bit more realistic drift. I'm gonna use a morning wood hopper here. This is one of my favorites for uh, uh, fish that are a little pickier on flatter water, and I'm gonna show you how to rig it where it'll be even more convincing. All right, so I'm gonna uh, show you a little trick for, for rigging a hopper. This is a morning wood hopper, uh, which is a pretty realistic hopper pattern. Um, and I like to use this on flat water or where fish start to get a little picky and, and really eyeball your fly. Um, and we've all had fish come up and poke a hopper and then turn away and not eat it. And one of the things I've kind of figured out over the years is watching real hoppers um, as they uh, float down the, the river, they tend to kick themselves in a circle and the fly rotates or the, the bug rotates as he, as he goes down the stream. So uh, I'm going to show you a trick for rigging that that's going to make that a little easier um, and a little bit more convincing. The, uh, uh, whole whole idea of fishing with a hopper is you want to have the right rig to start with and I like to use a, a fairly short leader something fairly heavy uh, seven and a half foot 2x or 3x power taper um, this is a steeper taper so it'll really turn over these bigger flies a little bit better so I'll start with the, one of those and I'll typically tie a piece of tippet on the end of it um, I don't like to get it too long um, but if you are on flat water it doesn't hurt to get lengthen that out a little bit and add some tippet even up to 18 inches um, so I'm just going to take a piece of 3x here um, and I typically use fluorocarbon. I use fluorocarbon on almost everything these days. It just holds up much better. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie a non-slip mono loop, which is something um, you know a lot of nymph fishermen are familiar with these days um, because it lets the fly kind of pivot around and swivel around in the water. So I'm going to start off with just a, an overhand knot there. And then I'm going to take my hopper and run this up through the hook eye. And one of the tricks when you tie a overhand or a, a non-slip mono loop is you want to come into the knot the same way that you came out. So I want to run back through that knot, and I like to keep that overhand knot really small. And I'll pull it right down to the eye of the hook. And then I'll come around four or five times here. Um, I know there's probably some scientific backing for how many times you should go around, but I go four or five. And then again, when I bring the tag in back down, I want to go back into the knot the same way I came out. And I'll just start to snug that down. And I'll wet that a bit. And then I always like to hook this on something. Um, the loop on my nippers works well to pull that knot down and leave myself that loop. Then I can cut this tag end out. And now I've got a hopper that when a fish comes up and pokes it, will swivel back and forth. Um, instead of being you know, rigidly stuck to that fairly heavy piece of tippet where he's just going to sit still, um, that fly will move back and forth and rotate in the water. And that's my little flat water secret for fishing a big hopper and getting a little bit more realism out of it. Uh -huh.